In this video, I'll show you, for the first time, the new upcoming Army Painter Fanatic Complete Box. It's empty right now. And I'll focus on the amazing new washes and effects that you haven't really heard much about. You may have heard this either from me here on the channel or on my Twitch stream, or from many other creators here on the internet, or maybe even from their own website and social media, but the Army Painter will be releasing in early 2024 a new line of opaque acrylic paints and metallics and washes and effects called Fanatic. This new set of 216 new paints will replace the current war paints that you see in stores now. I think it's very exciting. As I mentioned in a previous video, I've had access to the 162 normal acrylics since sometime in August, and I've been using them as my daily drivers pretty much since then. Pachow, go check out that video. They're amazing paints, creamy consistency, very, very smooth. Um, they mix down great with uh, water and medium and all kinds of stuff like that. They have three to seven times more pigment than the old paints, depending on the color. And they come in these amazing kind of six color family groupings that makes kind of picking the proper highlights and shades and whatnot for your projects really a no brainer. They've stepped up their paints so much. They're honestly my favorites now. But in the box, there are 216 new paints, and I only, I mean only, uh, had access to 162 of them initially. None of the washes, none of the metallics, and none of the effects. That is, until last week, when a deceptively heavy box showed up on my front porch, and I opened it to find uh, this in there, which is currently empty. All the paints are at home. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to pick it up quite so easily. This is the new Fanatic set from the Army Painter, which will be going on pre-order soon, from what I've been told, uh, right around the beginning of the year. Again, this box that I picked up was heavy. This is empty, uh, like really, really heavy. I thought at first when I picked up the cardboard box, you know, that this, that this box was in, that maybe they sent me two complete sets in the box by mistake, but no, it's, it's just one really heavy box. Now, other paint sets that I've gotten from the Army Painter over the years, uh, you know, airbrush paints and, um, you know, the speed paints and stuff like that, they've rattled around a little bit in the box sometimes. The paint bottles are generally uh, held in these like little clear plastic trays, and sometimes just the box flexes and things kind of slide around a little bit. Not with this set. These bottles were squeezed into this giant box hard, like real hard. At first, I almost wondered as I was trying to get like at least one of them out of there, if they were maybe stuck in place on the bottom with that kind of weird, sticky, kind of booger-like rubber cement stuff that they use to stick extra ads to magazine covers and stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like, but it, that was not the case. They're, they were just wedged in there really, really nice and secure because there's so many of them. Also, this set came with some literature, you know, some paperwork, some stuff, some stickers. People love stickers. And there's also a really nice new painting guide that they've produced that you'll probably start to see all over the place, which is especially great for getting information to new people in the hobby. It's very, it covers everything from building to clipping to painting and priming and all that kind of stuff. There's also four brushes in there too, a regiment brush, an insane detail brush, a small dry brush, and a masterclass moderate dry brush as well. Now, if you are buying the giant complete set, then you probably already have brushes, but it's still kind of nice that they like to add little things like that into these sets. In the starter box, they add a brush and a mini, which is great when you're starting out. And I think it's either in the mega box or the most wanted box, they're gonna give you a paint rack made out of some sort of material. The labels to the paints are all new as well, and you might think that you don't care about the labels on your paint bottles, but you should. These labels, in my opinion, are ingeniously designed. They tell you all the normal things like safety stuff, you know, and how many milliliters and all that stuff. Still 18 milliliters, just like the old ones. Uh, and they also tell you the fancy name of the color, like Rainforest or Afterglow or Blood Chalice. But they also tell you what the color actually is with what is known as practical color naming, like strong purplish blue. This helps you to make more sense of what the color actually is. 
Also, the labels for the acrylics show you which color family that they're from, like desaturated blue grays. And they also show you which of the six colors in the gradient of this family that this specific bottle is, right? This will not only help you to kind of keep your color families organized for easy color picking off of wherever you keep your paints, but both this and the practical color naming will also help people who have trouble with color, either because of color blindness or whatever might cause you to have troubles keeping your color choices straight when painting. So the opaques are great, and I think they'll really get some other companies to have to kind of step up their game. However, this box also included the new opaque metallic range. These are really nice as well. Army Painter made a whole video about them recently on their channel. Pachow. The new formulation includes a mixture of aluminum flake and mica flake. Usually, just straight mica is the standard for miniature paint metallics. So adding in this aluminum flake, it really kind of changes the way that these paints act, and they're, they're, they're really nice that way. It, it makes them very unique, I think. The range of new metallic colors is also incredibly unique, from the super bright mithril silver uh, all the way down to death metal. But with all that, there really hasn't been much talk about the washes and the effects paints, which are also in this new line and in this box. So I want to talk about my testing with those things. The wash formulation doesn't seem to have changed, which is great. They are my favorite washes to use as they're very, very nicely fluid and not gloopy like the newer GW washes that they released a little while ago after they reformulated them, which I wasn't super a big fan of. Pachow. What they really changed, though, besides the labels and all that kind of stuff, is the number of colors. The old line of Army Painter washes was this. Dark tone, strong tone, soft tone, light tone, and mid-brown, right? And then there was flesh wash, military shader, and then four colored washes, red, blue, green, and purple. Tone uh, is what they were called. A nice grouping of colors, and it always worked out pretty well for me. But there were some gaps in the color choices, in my opinion. That is no longer an issue with the new line of washes. The new line is all of those previous colors, except mid-brown is now called sepia tone, which I think makes more sense, actually. Uh, but plus, there's a bunch of new colors as well. Rust tone, uh, dark red tone, and dark blue tone, which are darker versions of the red and blue washes. Magenta tone, this will make Vince Venturella very happy, I think. And the flesh wash has kind of been replaced with strong skin shade and a dark skin shade. There's also a wash medium for thinning your washes without using water, which can, too much water can start to mess things up a little bit. You know, when you really start to spread things around, it can make the pigments start to get streaky and stuff. These new wash colors are great additions and really expand what was available before. But what I was really interested in was the new effects paints in the Fanatic line. The old line had basically really only four effects that weren't, you know, like mediums and varnishes and, and such. The new Fanatic line has doubled the number of effects that aren't mediums and, you know, varnishes and such. Uh, and, and these new effects are really interesting. I see myself using them all of the time. There are two blood effects now where there used to just be one called glistening blood. Now there's true blood, which is thinner, uh, a brighter red, it kind of runs into the crevices a little bit more and it dries real glossy. And then there's dry blood, which is a, a darker red and has particles in it to make things look a little bit more congealed. These particles are tiny, tiny, I don't want to say microscopic, but very, very, very tiny resin bits to add texture uh, to the, this effect. And, and we'll see those same uh, resin bits in several of the other new effect paints. And that one, uh, the dry blood, also dried a little bit glossy. There's also disgusting slime and oozing vomit. The former is a newer version of the previous effect paint of the same name, and the latter is completely new. Disgusting slime dries glossy and really looks like slime, but it's really bright, like nuclear bright, like much brighter than it was before. It'll be amazing for like nuclear waste leakage and stuff like that straight out of the bottle. Oozing Vomit is a darker green, glossy, and has those, again, tiny little resin particles in it, you know, to make it look a little bit more textured. Chunky, if you will. There's two rust effects now, dark rust and fresh rust. You can probably guess like what the colors in that situation look like. They're quite opaque. They both 
dry with like a matte finish, as rust should, in my opinion. And they have, again, those tiny little resin particulates in there to add texture. I would say more resin particulate than the dry blood or the oozing vomit. They, these are a little bit thicker, but when watered down, they become a little like a rust wash with a little bit of texture in it, and they go into the crevices like rust should. The last two effects that I'll mention aren't really part of a pair like the other ones, the bloods, the rusts, and the oozes, right? But they're still two of my favorites. Uh, they're completely new to the Army Painter line, Verdigris and Old Stains, right? Verdigris, or Verdigris, or I don't know how exactly, I think it's pronounced Verdigris. It refers to that kind of light blue-green sort of turquoise material that comes from oxidizing on certain types of metal, generally copper, uh, bronze, stuff like that. And it's great for weathering old metal. This new Verdigris effect is kind of thick, right? And it has particles like some of the others, and it dries matte. However, if you thin it a bit, you know, maybe from a little bit to a whole bunch, it makes a much more subtle effect and then it dries into the crevices, which you might prefer. Then there's the oil stains effect paint. Also, something very new from the Army Painter line. It's a bit thick, not too goopy, right? But it's also transparent and it dries quite glossy, like quite glossy. Honestly, I thought it was still wet several hours later after I first tested it and I had to poke it with my finger to see. Uh, it, it just really looks like an oil stain. Now, not like the iridescent colors you see in the street when a car is leaking oil, not like that. Just kind of a nice, kind of dark, cool black oil color. I can see this being used on tanks and any kinds of other big vehicles and stuff like that. Imperial Knights, whatever. I think it's very cool. Then there's also five fluorescent colors, which aren't particularly thick. I would not say that they're opaque. They're almost kind of like slightly thicker washes themselves. And they really work best over like white or other light colors, of course. I wouldn't put them over a dark color. I'm looking forward to using them on some plasma guns soon because I think they'll be just about perfect for that type of thing. There's also a gloss varnish and a matte varnish. There's a drying retarder to make the, the dry time longer in your so you can blend more and stuff like that. And then there's the new War Paints Stabilizer, which basically replaces the War Paints Medium. This, again, helps to keep the pigment together when you are thinning these paints to the extreme for, like, glazing and stuff, for example. So that's what comes in this new upcoming complete set for the new Fanatic line of paints from the Army Painter. And therefore, this is also an overview of the entire new line that will be available in smaller boxed sets, like there's a starter set, there'll be a mega set, uh, a most wanted set, and, and they'll also be available in single bottles and all that kind of stuff coming out at the beginning of 2024. I don't know if the six bottle color families will be available for sale, right? Like most stores probably won't have space in their army painter racks for a whole bunch of extra like little six packs of different bottles, you know, that kind of stuff. But maybe army painter will down the road, like offer them online or something. I'm not really sure, but I do hope that those color families will be available. Uh, so you could just buy them and have them and, and get them that way too. These paints are truly amazing. I'm so glad to be able to add these to my paint collection along with the Army Painter airbrush paints and also with the speed paints. Between these three lines, nearly everything that you might need to paint your miniatures is covered with very high quality products. So what are you thinking? Are you looking forward to adding some of these paints to your collection? Have you gotten to try out some of the new Fanatic paints? They've been kind of debuting them and showing them off kind of secretly at certain different tournaments and conventions and things like that. Let me know down in the comments below. Hit the like button. I appreciate it. It helps out the channel. And also subscribe to see more every single Friday. Thanks for watching.